And we're live. Welcome to sprint number nine launched. Uh, there was a lot going on this sprint. This is, a, this is one of, I think, the probably across the board, all of our favorite sprints that we've had so far because uh, we got so much done and it's ready to show. Uh, so with no further ado, I'll, I'll lead off uh, the action for, for this sprint, at least on my side. And uh, I'm going to let Jeff present the common simulator, although I'm itchy figures about it. I'm very excited for that one, but you'll have to wait till the end to hear all about that, that one. Uh, the other big launch is we created the first uh, application ever, uh, a three chain application that will uh, allow you to become a legal member of a Swiss association. It's super cool. Uh, first, you have to apply to the trusted seed. And then once you apply to the trusted seed and, uh, and use our DAP, you will become a legal member of our Swiss association. And uh, I, this, this, this amazing application, it's effortless. You wouldn't know that there's three blockchains involved and uh, this whole extra process when you, when you go through it. Uh, and at the end, you're a legal member in Switzerland. I just think it's simple. Uh, and it, what is all possible because of the work of so many people, it actually took us about a year to build this application, had a few iterations. Uh, I wanna give a special shout out to Spanet, Pavle, Amin, Fabio, Merlin, Sergey, Marco, uh, Jake and Gus and Tam and Kat and Kai and Nelson and Jelena and Loi and Chris and Chris, both Chris's old Chris and new Chris, um, and Dan, and uh, Jeff, and Coach B, and uh, myself as well. We all, we all uh, worked on this for a long time, and it got to finally uh, a launching point. Uh, one thing that's worth noting is that dues are 450 DAI, uh, and, uh, but you do get C-Stack tokens for these dues. But if 450 DAI is a, in any way a challenge for you, uh, we offer a membership, uh, a scholarship uh, for membership. So we want to make sure that uh, this membership is accessible to everyone. So you can uh, apply for a scholarship on Giveth. We have this, this will eventually become a blog post, but uh, anyone who's watching this that wants to uh, go to membership.commonstack.foundation to become a legal member of our Swiss Association, uh, you can also apply for a scholarship. And if you have any comments on how we can improve this process, uh, please, uh, please make comments in this Google Doc. Uh, there's a few comments already that need to be integrated, but you can see you basically just make a uh, an, you do the scholarship on top of Giveth, and then uh, you make a you make a request there, and we will send you four hundred fifty dollars in die so that you can become a member. So no worries there. Uh, also, uh, when you do pay membership dues uh, on the Giveth application, you'll be able to see exactly where your membership dues go, completely traceable and transparent. Uh, I think it's more transparent than any other Swiss association I know of. Uh, also this week, we had a, uh, I had a panel discussion with uh, Drew Harding, James Young, and, and Maria Paula. Uh, the video is not quite on YouTube yet, but it was really fun. And we talked about uh, the evolution of DAOs and digital currencies. I made a special note to make sure that we want to, uh, the next big thing is lots of small things and replacing uh, the large monolithic uh, structures we have around public goods with micro economies, maybe with the common stack. Anyway, uh, also this week, there was major progress in the common swarm. We were able to pass our proposal and we got 65 honey to continue the work on building out the, uh, the future of you know, common stack economies, at least for iteration zero. So uh, we're, very thank we're very grateful to uh, Will J. Griff and uh, all, all the other people who helped us uh, like fine tune our proposal so that we can uh, so that the uh, community would accept it. And, and they were eventually, we, we kept working on it and working on it until they were begging us to make this proposal. So, and that's where we want to be. We want to be, we want to be uh, like incredible, we want to be desired, right? So we got, we got there and the common swarm team uh, has 65 honey when we requested it was 40K and now it's like, you know, about 80. So that's really cool. <laughs> that was really fast. Uh, and uh, on that front, we also made major progress uh, on the evolution of the, of the gardens template. So um, originally when we were looking at iteration zero, we were going to use the old version of conviction voting and uh, just a normal dandelion DAO. But as, uh, because, because time permits, we're go uh, Aragon uh, one, the Aragon one team actually built this really cool application for DAOs 
that was uh, that included a lot of cool features that I've wanted for years, five years. These were all uh, proposals that were made during the DAO, like in 2016, that are finally uh, available and audited, but have never been implemented. So we're going to follow One Hive's lead. They're going to, uh, and I, I went and did a deep dive with Luke to go into the new parameters for this uh, for this structure, uh, and the, it's really cool. Like we're going to have delegated voting. So one hop delegation so that you can actually delegate uh, the, the power to vote on large, uh, not for conviction voting, but for like, if we wanna change parameters, you can delegate that vote to someone. Also, we have the wait till quiet, which uh, instead of a, uh, the time box proposals that it's like at the very end, whatever the answer is, is the answer. Uh, with wait to quiet, if the, if the vote it goes from a yes to a no or a no to a yes at, in the last day or in the last time period, then you add extra time at the end because it's a controversial vote and maybe the people who haven't voted yet would, would want to vote because it's controversial. So very cool features. That's just a couple of them. Uh, there's, uh, I, I guess the other big one I need to mention is Celeste, which is a decentralized dispute a resolution organization uh, using the uh, Honey. So, uh, and Bright ID, it's very cool. Uh, but if you wanna learn more, there's all sorts of information on Celeste and disputable voting. Uh, and this video is really like, if you wanna understand what the, um, what all the parameters mean, uh, like in the deep dive, this is the, we're gonna take this and make a lot of blog posts off of it. So, uh, sorry, that was a lot of time. I'll pass it to Tam. Thank you, Tam. Hey, that was great. Let me try to, Share my screen now. Okay. Yeah, so what Griff said, this is the best Sprint we've ever had. Uh, it's so hard to say goodbye to this one. Sprint 9 launched, we've launched so many things. Um, you know, our Sprint board, we have uh, a record twice as many closed issues as open issues. And actually some of those issues are actually repeating um, repeating tasks that have to get finished after like at the end of the sprint and over the weekend. So it's not even representative of, of everything that's closed this sprint. And, um, you know, speaking of one of those repetitive tasks, uh, we have someone on our team who's often behind the scenes and she doesn't join us on these calls. Her name is Ivy. And um, this is what she looks like. And Ivy is like <laughs> amazing. Um, she uh, is the one who's gonna polish off this video and add a, a little intro and do the time stamping to make sure that we can get it out tomorrow morning. She's in the Philippines, which is why she's not joining this call. The time difference is just too great. Um, she's the one who dishes praise every Friday for Twitter engagement. She does the airdrops of CS Love Tokens every Tuesday for New Swiss Association members and so much more. So I can't, I can't say enough praise for Ivy. Um, the other thing that happened this sprint from the token engineering commons side was the token engineering um, uh, community stewards manifesto. The uh, really close to final draft is released. So it's a pretty good draft, uh, enough that I'm willing to make it public. Uh, we talk about uh, what the goals are of the community stewards, um, stewarding the TEC objectives, uh, what success and what failure would look like. Uh, we have a roadmap to the TEC hatch, which is now updated. Uh, it's already out of date, but we have a TEC hatch and beyond to the commons upgrade. Um, we talk about our working style and pace, where to, where to find us, where to join the conversation or join our calls, and a little bit about our scrum theory and how we're doing sprints within the TEC, which is very similar to how we're doing it in, um, in com uh, common stack. And our members. So if you're interested in TEC, uh, these are the people that you should reach out to for your particular interest in your particular working group. We also talk about how we onboard and offboard stewards as well. So um, yeah, that's it. That's it for my side. And I'd love to hear what Livia has to share. Hey, thanks, Tim. Okay, so let me share. what I have here. So I'd, the Zoom bar is on top of it. 
Okay, so this this print, we continue some work that uh, we started last month with Greater Than. We started to work on the relational fabric of uh, the Common Stack team. And we had a process to understand what are our roles and our accountabilities. So this week we had a pretty fun exercise on the mural board to understand what, uh, what do we do what do we want to go towards? How do we want to expand in our roles? And how do we like to be kept accountable? How, how is, what is the best way for people to reach out to us if we drop something? How can we understand uh, who are we in the context of the team? So what each person does and how, um, how this shows what is the, common stack all together. So the titles of our of our roles was a little bit hard to define because sometimes we do uh, way more than just the scope of our role. But trying to keep it uh, short, we got uh, Tamara is the program, ma program manager, Griff development product owner, Jeff token engineering researcher, Chris comms and legal coordinator, Dan is the gardener of the trusted seed. Jess is a uh, special projects and partnerships lead, and I'm the cultural build lead. So that's what we have in the common stack team now. And of course, Ivy as the admin superhero. So um, yeah, moving on from, from this part, I also um, joined Juan Carlos last week for the Graviton training. So we went over uh, what is, uh, how, how Ostrom's eight principles help us in the, um, in the culture and in our relationships and in conflict resolution and management in the TEC. So you can find this, uh, this session. It was pretty fun. Um, you can find it in the, in the TEC YouTube to watch it full, there is more or less one hour. And then in the last 30 minutes, we did a, a theater exercise that was also pretty fun. And you can understand how uh, how does this principles, how do they apply to the TEC? And then also I wanna uh, show this amazing work that it's been happening for a long time behind the scenes that mostly Santi and Matteo have been championing it to implement source cred in the TEC. So when we move from uh, the prey system that we have now into the post hatch, that uh, it's gonna be a little bit more intricate to reward contributions. We've been um, working on source cred to have that happening in parallel with praise. So this week we had um, a lot of people helping a lot on deciding all of these parameters. And this is what we have for now, and we're going to keep testing them. And uh, you can check all of them uh, in this uh, source cred explorer link. And yeah, that, that's it for me. And I'll pass to Chris. All right. Uh, I'm just going to share my screen here as well. Uh, so the first thing that I would like to talk about is that our Discord server is live. So if anyone watching this is not in our Discord server yet, um, either ask us uh, for a link or um, we should have it linked uh, by the time this call goes out or this video goes out, um, at least the recording of it. Uh, it should be linked from our website and other locations as well. Um, so that's, that's exciting. This is uh, kind of our main communications hub now. Um, we're hoping that it'll be a little more uh, functional than uh, our Telegram groups because it's a little more uh, in one location as opposed to a bunch of siloed conversations. So excited about that. And another part of Discord is the praise bot. So it is working right now. Uh, big thank you to RDF BBX for putting in all his work uh, in both coding and debugging it and deploying it and yeah, all of his work on that. That's been really great. Uh, just I'll just go through a really quick uh, demonstration of it, just to um, yeah, just so folks watching this call can uh, get a feel for it. Um, the biggest thing that you need first is uh, your you have to have the praise giver role. 
Um, that's the most important thing in the Discord server right now. The bot will not recognize you unless you have that role. Uh, we can give you a uh, we can give you that role. Um, the only thing that we want to do before that is uh, just kind of go over a little bit of the uh, onboarding. So how to use it, why we use it, uh, and that kind of thing. So if you're interested in uh, dishing praise and getting that praise giver role, definitely uh, let us know. And it's as simple as hitting uh, exclamation mark praise, and I always uh, mistype it, uh, and I'll just do a test. Uh, um, we'll praise Griff for it, uh, for a test. He's going to get an extra praise. So we send that message. The bot will pick it up, and it should, rec should uh, react with a white check mark if everything goes right. That should mean that if it gets that check mark there, it should mean that Griff has received a DM outlining what, uh, how to claim his praise. Uh, and it, there should also be a entry in our uh, disc, or sorry, in our Google sheet. And so here it is, praise Griff uh, with, as a test and it's in the praise channel. So it also recognizes um, which, which channel uh, the praise is dished in so that we can exclude things from like our praise testing channel, for example, or we can highlight other um, specific um, channels where it was done. Um, the other nice thing about this is that it can be added to any uh, Discord server and we can track uh, other yeah, praise between servers as well. So if you're interested in uh, trying to integrate the praise bot into uh, a server that you own, or that uh, if you're interested in integrating that somehow, let us know, we can, uh, we can sort out how, how to make that happen. Um, then moving on from, I guess I can stop sharing my screen now. Uh, but yeah, uh, Orbit is now connected to all our social accounts. It's connected to the Common Stack Twitter, as well as uh, the Token Engineering Commons Twitter and the Discourse uh, Forum. So that is, uh, that's all feeding into our uh, Orbit data. We also have new and updated content that's coming very, very soon. Um, some of them we are working into uh, actual launches. So the Common Simulator is launching right away and uh, we will be uh, sending out some, uh, yeah, some content kind of explaining what it is, why we built it and what it's useful for. Um, same thing for the membership DAP walkthrough, we're going to be pushing out some content just to help you guys get through that DAP and become members of our Swiss association. Uh, we also have a CStack score explainer coming soon and a newer, we also are going to focus, um, shift our focus a little bit in terms of content to producing some more digestible uh, and interactive video content. Uh, so look for that coming soon as well. Uh, the last thing uh, for this week, uh, contributor issues are in the process of being cleaned up. Uh, they'll be given more detail in the next sprint. So I've taken out some of the ones that just didn't seem like they, they would be something easy to tackle for a contributor. Um, and yeah, if you have any questions about uh, role or issues that are tagged as four contributors, feel free to reach out. We'd, we'd love to have you uh, contribute. We'd love to have get you involved and get you going on an issue if, you're, if there's one of interest to you. Um, so this is ongoing. Um, if you have any suggestions on how uh, we can make this process more useful to you, again, reach out, let us know. We're happy to uh, make some changes and make this work for, for everyone. Uh, with that, I will pass to Dan. Hey, Dan here. Uh, so you guys have been coding off a little bit and I uh, probably will shut down my video. But before I do that, anyway, I want to share some things. Uh, we had the MAA, uh, the Ask Me Anything. That was nice. Basically, we topped the channel on Discord. That was the first, so that's fun. That's fun. A lot of people came. A lot of people that asked some great questions. Nate, I don't know, Ben, every, I mean, there were some interesting questions coming up. Like, I mean, we already had like a, the idea is that this kind of space will happen more often. So basically there are more opportunities to ask direct questions to the team to interact in this space. We already had the Discord. So, and you can just actually just go ahead and ask a question right now down there. We will reach out. We had a new tag firm. This is live in the website. And it, yeah, yeah, I mean, I, there are so many, I mean, this, this was a redesign. We understand the kind of like a, 
the kind of questions that we need to ask uh, to cater to the trusted seat. And I really want to briefly show you how it ends. So we understand that this is the start of a shared journey. This is a shared journey. We are co-building this. So basically, this is the new ending to the type firm. It's not much to show, but anyway. <laughs> uh, just really wanted to go through that and give me a second. And Lydia was mentioning the role section. And when we think about the trusted seed, I mean, there are so many ways it can grow. Um, these, are, these are some illustrations from the Codex Serafinianus. So basically this is not human, but anyway, I mean like uh, this is something new, something like from the multiverse, something from many dimensions. So the kind of things that can grow out of this shared connection, this shared synapse are so beautiful. And this is an invitation to just engage more with us. We, we know there are many moving pieces, there are many questions. Uh, I, ha I had a couple of conversations with members of the trusted seat that reach out later after the MA. And uh, yeah, I just want to give you guys some stats uh, for a second. Wait, 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 wait. What am I? Yeah, just give me a second to give you some stats. So anyway, uh, no, this is crazy. Anyway, <laughs> sorry, it's just tricky to move across to desk, but I just wanted to let you guys know that we had some new applications to the trusted seat during this month, and that is fun. Uh, so basically, we had 27 new, new applicants to the trusted seat in February, and I just went through the data, and if we think about all the applicants that have ever applied, successful applicants, we are topping 467 successful applicants. Uh, we had 18, or it, it will actually be 18 plus uh, Commons Stack Swiss Membership Association members. I, uh, that was a bit redundant of me, but please pardon that. But anyway, I mean, this is coming together. And I really want to give a, a couple of shout outs to some people that gave a lot of feedback this week to me. So like Mihai from Carbon Base and Deep Troop. We had a heart-to-heart -heart conversation on the process of the trusted seed and how what we can do about contributors and this kind of spaces will emerge. That is the important thing to think about, like uh, this kind of space are co-emerging. I mean, let's go build this space. You're invited to this conversation. You're invited to get the tools and, and start working on this together. There are a couple of campaigns that will be on, upcoming. So basically we really want to uh, get you guys to know like, oh my God, my seed stat core just increased. So how did that happen? So we really want to get you guys <laughs> to know that. So like the praise you get, the praise you earn during the last month, you know, like, oh my God, this happened. And just as well, this kind of bridge to the TEC. So there are a couple of, com of conversations, campaigns coming for the Trusted Seed on that site. Um, yeah, and I, ha I had a fun surprise. Uh, there aren't many, um, as some of you know, maybe uh, I, I'm based in Venezuela. There aren't as many people in the, you know, in the space in Venezuela interested in these kinds of things. But I had a friend that applied and she's coming over to collaborate live next week. That's going to be fun. So, yeah, we're going to be hacking live. So that's fun. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I'll pass it to Jess. Thanks, Dan. Really great stuff there. I'm super happy this week. Thanks to Tamara and the CS Schwag crew. Ask how you can get yours and check your wallets for CS Love. Just a reminder, you can reach out to Tamara if you have any questions on how to get your cool CS Schwag to wear proudly. Um, yeah, so I'm going to share screen and share a few things happening, uh, mostly uh, a lot of work going on right now uh, for me and, and the crew that I've been collaborating with is ecosystem acceleration and development. So the first part of that, I had the, the honor to speak with Simon de la Riviere, our trusted seed spotlight number four, where he shares his book that I'm on page 87 right now. It's a page turner. I think I'm going to uh, I think I'm going to finish it this weekend, maybe. Hope Runners of Gridlock. So I talked to him about the book and he shares uh, a little bit uh, about his process and how he's able to kind of get outside the box and why, you know, I, I think he's one of the most creative thinkers in the space. So I got to kind of pick his brain a little bit and share with you his process and how he looks at certain challenges and comes up with creative solutions. So it's a, a really uh, cool interview that I'm excited to share with you guys. You can look for that coming out next week. Um, 
And then a lot of conversations happening right now, as Dan said, and, and looking for synergies and these co-collaborations and what we're working on. So we have conversations going on right now with Civilization OS and Ben Life, uh, Dakad, who's developing a really cool P2P learning platform, um, Ape Unit out of Berlin, Data Art, Metagame, Conflux, Bozen Protocol, Token Kitchen, Near Protocol, so much happening. Um, so that's really exciting. And then a lot of uh, talks right now about governance uh, and how to come up with solutions. So a lot of uh, our ecosystem friends are collaborating about that, including uh, LeapDAO, who recently submitted a proposal um, to the TEC. And that's one thing I wanna say is we are still open for proposal submissions. If you have a project you're working on that is commons or token engineering related, um, you can still submit. Uh, it would be great if you can get in before the hatch. So please reach out to us so you can submit your proposal here on our forum. And then once we hatch, um, you can submit a proposal to the uh, to conviction voting so we can vote to give you money. So reach out to us. We're still accepting proposals. Um, and uh, one last mention for the ecosystem acceleration, the token, our friends at the Token Engineering Academy uh, are looking to scale, which is really exciting. So the Common Stack is supporting the Token Engineering Academy and looking for resources and fundraising recruitment. They're gonna pump some energy in soon in the next months. Angela, um, she's done an incredible job in building the Token Engineering Academy and now she needs support to scale those efforts to expand educational programs and offer uh, more fantastic research collaborations. And one of those happening right now is the Gitcoin Grants Research Group. And the Common Stack is also supporting that where we've had these really amazing hack sessions going on. There's a coding session, there's an academic session looking at the Gitcoin CAD CAD model um, and modeling for uh, more resilient governance and looking at collusion. And Angela then ran with that and she's got a whole research group going with TE Academy right now. So there's plenty of opportunity to learn and explore um, this very new area and, and learn about CAD CAD modeling and why that's so important for our socioeconomic systems. So very cool stuff happening there that the Comstack is happy to support with promotion, coordination, video, throwing people in the, in the space and saying, here, go. And lots of knowledge sharing happening in our knowledge commons. So that's been really fantastic. And uh, also included in our uh, support and what we're um, helping to get going to is the TEC Labs also is uh, offering free knowledge sharing every Friday as well at uh, 8 a.m. PST, 11 a.m. EST. So Sean Anderson is leading that, who is a superstar and he's providing so much educational opportunity to our whole ecosystem. So this has been a fantastic initiative that we're happy to continue to support um, with those efforts. And then the last couple of mentions here are there's a new piece coming out today that we are collaborating on about TE public goods. What are they, why they're so important and how to responsibly wield our new Promethean fire. So what the heck am I talking about? You can read that when it uh, goes out today. Um, so thanks to Griff and Jeff and Chris and everyone for contributing with that piece. And then we've got, oh, me parties. Uh, me parties happening every Friday. You're invited. It's a wild fun time. This is one that Griff is kind of our, our meme master professor. So we jump in a little meeting every Friday for 30 minutes and just hack on memes for CommonStack, TEC, anything for open source, Web3, have a little fun. So here you can see uh, you have two choices and you can turn off onto TE Commons exit here, exit crypto technocracy. So um, join the meme parties every Friday and we'll be posting that in the comments stack discord so that you can jump in and join the fun. And we also have our meme channel on the discord. And the last mention is um, some amazing work that we've been waiting for. And now it's here, the launch of the common simulator. So Jeff is going to talk to us about that. Take it away, Jeff. Yeah, I'm actually going to save the simulator launch for last and start with uh, a common request in our Discord and Telegram and so on is, 
what is the common stack? Um, there are so many people that dive into our pieces and read our technical you know, specs and go, wow, this is so complicated and, and wonderful, but we don't get it. So we're really trying to bring it kind of to a higher level and explain what is the common stack? What are we trying to achieve and bring a bit more of the visual aesthetic into it so we can understand all of the various priorities and, and goals that the common stack is, is aiming for. Um, so we've split it up into these seven different focus areas uh, we are, for example, the curators of the trusted seed. Uh, we're working on commons deployment assistance, like for the token engineering commons. We are a development group working on smart contracts and, um, and simulators. Uh, we are an ecosystem accelerator. Uh, we do uh, all sorts of comms, communications, and, and legal uh, uh, development. Uh, we're a knowledge commons of, uh, you know, soft governance, cultural practices that work for DAOs. Uh, and we're also a research lab that's kind of doing some of this blue sky thinking about how DAOs should work, what kind of primitives we need, and what kind of tools come together uh, in these kinds of ecosystems. Um, and in the uh, brainstorming process, uh, we kind of came up, you know, seven uh, focus areas, seven colors of the rainbow, seven chakras. Um, so this um, was... A, uh, a brainstorm that came out uh, heavily inspired by, by Jessica, of course, and uh, her holistic uh, nature. But having the, the trusted seed as the grounding and the roots, uh, these deployments as the uh, sort of fertility and creativity, the development group being action and power, an ecosystem accelerator uh, fostering support and love, the comms and legal being our voice and also our capability to listen the knowledge commons bringing awareness and perspective with all the other experiments going on in the space right now and the research lab being inquiry and exploration. So uh, this is going to go into a piece talking about uh, the common stack 2021 uh, narrative direction and uh, yeah, happy to kind of bring our, our mission a little bit more high level so we're not in the, in the technical rabbit hole as much. But of course, you know, some of our, our technical designs and, and engineering specs dive down there, but we wanted to present this higher level concept of all of the different areas the common stack is working on. Um, so with that in mind, uh, we've also started to organize all of the common stack work within uh, a notion and organizing, you know, all of our focus areas so that we can uh, coordinate better. And, you know, we have so much going on. We have so many links. We've got so many uh, initiatives. So just starting to organize all of those within uh, the common stack notion is starting to come together. Um, and also we want to share a lot of this content with our audience. Um, we definitely understand we've produced a lot of content. It's in a lot of places. Uh, so we're going to start using Notion to aggregate all of this content into one place so we can share these links easily, pin them in our channels. You'll see them in our Discord shortly uh, with all of our um, articles and videos and uh, all of the, the great content we've, putting it, we've put out there. We're just trying to pull it all into one place so it's easy to find and easier to understand. One other note, uh, the preprint for our uh, Scaling the Global Commons academic paper is now out, uh, and it should be in the Frontiers, uh, Frontiers in Blockchain Academic Journal any day now. Um, huge shout out to Felix, um, Emmeline, Rock, uh, Michael Zargum, Michelle Bowens, um, Sarah Mansky. Everyone was really instrumental in bringing this paper together. Uh, it, was it was called a landmark paper by uh, Michelle Bowens. Um, we look at the common stack, uh, hollow chains, commons engine, and um, the economic space agency and compared all of these sort of commons based DLT projects uh, in a framework of, uh, of other commons literature. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a really great uh, read and we'll definitely make sure to share that in our channels as well. So you can check out all the uh, fantastic collaborations going on with other uh, members in this commons ecosystem. And finally, we have the launch of the Commons Simulator game. So this is our Medium post kind of breaking down a little bit. Uh, why did we do this? You know, the purpose of the simulator was not only to introduce the audience to the importance of the Commons and the inspiring radical exchange movement, but also to demonstrate how to parameterize and model the cyber physical Commons, including augmented bonding curves and conviction voting. Uh, it's also a great experiment in front end user interfaces to simplify and contextualize simulation results. So you don't have to go into GitHub and dive into Jupyter notebooks and read all the code and try to figure out the diagrams. Uh, we're just trying to bring it that much closer to 
uh, an audience who's who's ready to you know understand the complex dynamics of these ecosystems and just wants to make a good decision for their community. They don't want to have to go and learn you know complex math and data science. They just want to be able to use these tools uh, for for better computer aided governance, uh, which is we what we believe is the, is the future of governance is using uh, data driven models and digital twins simulations uh, to feed in the kinds of uh, uh, policy choices that we think make sense and then see from simulation results whether they actually result uh, in good choices. Um, so yeah, definitely please jump into the simulator. It is really cool. There are a lot of interactive elements that show how we allocate uh, funds between a funding pool and the reserve pool and the bonding curve, for example. Uh, here's an example of, uh, you know, the old Jupyter uh, notebooks, how you, you know, used to read these sort of diagrams. Now we're including them in a much more uh, user-friendly and understandable interface. You can play with the different parameters of conviction voting. Um, and yeah, understanding why we need a simulator in the first place. So fun fact, there are almost 3 billion different input combinations uh, when you walk through this simulator, which create 3 billion different alternative realities. You could consider each simulation like an alternative reality. And we're encouraging you to, to come in here, parameterize this commons um, and see if you create uh, a good future or a bad future for the radical exchange movement and the world. Uh, so we are going to uh, hit publish on this right now, and you can go and check out the common simulator uh, yourself. Well, okay, I submitted it. We'll have to hit publish in a second, I suppose, but you can come over to the simulator, uh, check it out, enter your name, and try your hand at getting the highest score in parameterizing a bright future for all of us. And I will pass it back to uh, Griff or Tam. Who wants to take it? I'll, t I'll take it home. Yeah, I, I just want to say that that common simulator is so much fun. You know, I, I don't think anyone has ever made simulations as fun as this. OK, like it's a you're, you're traveling in from the future to save the future. And I mean, it's, uh, you know, if you want to understand uh, how to uh, how, how what we're doing here, I think this is a great opportunity. And uh, and there was a lot of work put in from uh, the simulator team. So thank you all. Uh, and, but yeah, so you'll see it on the blog post. We give them all their names out. And uh, thank you guys for trying trying your hand at the simulator. And uh, thank you to the Common Stack team. You guys, we killed it this sprint. Uh, so congratulations. And we'll see you in two weeks for the next one. Bye everyone.